Hello, my name is Asher, and today I'm going to be breaking down photography in video games, specifically action sports titles such as Steep and the Skate series. So to break down photography in games, we're going to have to look at it from a couple of different angles. Get it? Like photography? <laughs> so phase one, what is photography? Phase two, the history of photography in video games. And phase three, the best game mechanic for photography in video games. So here we go, phase one. What is photography? I know what you're thinking, Asher, you big dummy. I know what photography is, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, I'm gonna break it down again. Photographylife.com describes photography as the art of capturing light with a camera, usually via a digital sensor or film to create an image. In a post 2013 world, it is hard to look anywhere without being hit with photo or video content due to our increasingly digital lives from social media to billboard advertising. Photography can be utilised in many forms, from artistic stylized compositions all the way to scientific documentation. This contrast is what makes photography in the form of a video game so interesting. The rigid structure of a video game puts photography into a strange medium. The developer of the game sets strict rules about how the game is played and how the photo modes can operate. In order to stand out as an in-game photographer, players often have to find unique ways to change scenery, lighting, and add effects through interactive elements of the game around them. A perfect example of this is in-game photographer Petri Leviati's use of smoke bombs to add depth to the background of a photo. Understanding and exploring these creative practices is what truly transforms video game photography from a scripted exercise into an art form. Phase 2, the history of photography in video games. Generally speaking, what most people jump to in terms of the first photography video game is Pokemon Snap for Nintendo 64. In the game, you play as Todd Snap, a budding young photographer on a mission for Professor Oak. The game places you in an enclosed vehicle, taking laps through different environments on a predetermined path. At the beginning of every level, the player is given 60 photos worth of film, a bottomless bag of apples, and some pesto balls. Apples can be used to lure in a Pokemon for a better photo, or used like pesto balls to aggravate the Pokemon into a desired pose. Once the level is completed, you select your preferred photos and let Professor Oak grade them. Oak grades your photos based on the following characteristics. The distance you are from the Pokemon, how close the Pokemon is to the centre of the image, and the pose of the Pokemon. But here's the hitch. Professor Oak hasn't got an arts degree. His Instagram isn't popping with millions of followers. Man spends all day locked up studying Pokemon. Why does he get to judge your art? This objective judgment of a subjective art form is what has made so many people shy away from in-game photography. Gran Turismo 4 was one of the first games to include a dedicated photo mode on the side, not as a main mechanic in the game. In this photo mode, the gamer has control of exposure, white balance, aperture, shutter speed, zoom, rotation, saturation, and focus. Gran Turismo 4's photo mode had absolutely nothing to do with the storyline and is just an option to take photos of your digital cars on scenic back roads. The freedom given to the player is fascinating as it allows the player to create their own paratexts within the game. Here's a little gallery of images that people have created on Gran Turismo 4, set to some light jazz for your viewing pleasure. Okay, so back to it. The Skate franchise is by far my favourite trilogy of video games to release. The open world nature of this game and precise controls made it a cult favourite immediately within the skateboarding community. Released in 2010, Skate 3 has a series of missions that mimic the idea of a skateboarding photo shoot. The player must do a trick of their choice over or on a certain rail, jump or ledge, whilst a photographer takes photos of you for the cover of a magazine. Once you've landed the trick that you like, you then take control of the photographer and choose the frame of the trick and edit it to your liking. This gives the player full creative control and there's zero incentive given or penalisation depending on how you choose to shoot this photo. 
This allows players to create art with no limitation. Steep is an open world winter action sports game that allows the players to snowboard, ski, wingsuit and parachute in three massive maps, Alaska, Japan and Europe. Steep was released on PC, PS4 and Xbox One and pushes the graphical capability of these consoles to the limit to produce breathtaking scenery. Just like in Gran Turismo 4, there's a photo mode that is purely artistic with no campaign purpose. Here are some shots I took of myself using the in-game photography tools in Steep. So this is where it gets interesting. I'm an active snowboarder and for both work and pleasure, I go snowboarding in photo shoots. Here I've recreated some real photos of myself snowboarding on Steep and posted them side by side for feedback on r slash steep, r slash skate 3 and r slash snowboarding. Here I've recreated some real photos of myself snowboarding on Steep and posted them side by side for feedback to r slash steep, r slash skate 3 and r slash snowboarding. I'm really impressed by the ability to do this within Steep, and I got a surprising amount of feedback from people who either do or are going to make their own recreations in Steep. So here it is, phase three. What's the best mechanic for photography and video games? So there's no way that I can objectively tell you what the best photography video game mechanic is, but I will anyways. It's a combination of Skate 3 and Steep. The context of photography in Skate 3 is perfect. Skateboarding and photography are intertwined as hobbies and mediums for expression, and the manner in which the game introduces the skater to photography mimics the real-life introduction for many. The game gives the skater 17 different photography challenges, with two levels of difficulty available, although I find myself wanting a little bit more. Steep does not have a goal for the photography mode, and it is actually quite hard to find. This leads most players to neglecting the photography aspect of the game, which is truly a shame. What Steep gets right is the sheer freedom the photo mode has. Want to throw on a filter? You've got it. Want to make obscurely minute changes to the focus? Done. Do you want to change the angle? Godoy, of course you can change the angle. As a keen photographer, the only thing that I think the game is missing is different lenses. I know what you're about to ask me. So Asher, why do I care about video game photography? Why don't I just go outside and take photos? Well, that's a really good point. But I think the photo mode allows the audience to further engage with the original content of the game, as well as create their own paratexts that help further develop the fan base and the overall experience. Artistically speaking, when I play steep and utilize the photo mode, I further my understanding of photography and I'm encouraged to try out obscure framing and angles that would seem almost physically impossible. But most of all, it's just wholesome. After a long day at work, I can digitally snowboard down a mountain on another continent and shoot some landscape photos. There's something truly relaxing about the perfect scenery and steep, and the ability for the player to take breathtaking images so easily is a truly underrated concept in the world of gaming. With most AAA titles having their own photo modes, I hope that you get the opportunity to sit down and explore new landscapes with a digital, digital camera in hand. 